Welcome back, everybody, to Gold Rush. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to return the drill, and we're going to go to the hotel, and we're going to spend the winter at the hotel after we cash out our gold. Um, so I ended up with 1,574.276 ounces of gold. I completely dug out, or drilled out, rather, all of the the dark gold squares, uh, as you can see here and here. And um, I could have even done the next shade of gold, too, <clears throat> but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm done drilling. <laughs> this is kind of boring, even though it was kind of neat to get that much gold. So I'm done. We, ha we have more than enough to get the... Um, Let's see, yeah, we got to put this guy here, I think, to return it. We have more than enough to get the Glacier Creek wash plant and a Frankenstein now, um, unless the gold prices have completely tanked, which I'm sure they haven't. Um, even if I had gone a little bit more, our, our drill is probably just about ready to bite the dust. Um, but, I, you know, we got enough. That's the bottom line. We got enough, so... I can't get out. There we go. All right. Um, just out of curiosity, though, let's take a look at this. Oh, 57%. There's still a lot of durability left on there. Uh, <clears throat> nah, well, let's just, <coughs> let's just move on. We got to balance fun factor with greed <laughs> here. Um, uh, the only reason why I would maybe keep going is just to find out if we can hit 1,600 ounces. But, yeah, I'm kind of burnt out on it, so we're just going to have to wait uh, and maybe find that out some other time. Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys, too, is – oh, i got to return this um, – is that um, – what was I going to say? Oh, that 1,400-ounce cap that I was talking about in the last episode, I guess that's only for leaderboard. So um, there we go. I guess that's for leaderboard. So apparently if you're not doing leaderboard, which of course I'm not, then it goes higher than that. It, what the actual cap is, who knows? One thing I will be curious though, when we do start digging, um, will we continue to get nuggets uh, or not? And if, if we don't, or if we only get maybe one or two more after a long period of time, then you know the cap, I would say, applies to both drilling and digging together. Uh, but if we start getting a whole bunch of nuggets digging, too, then that would seem to suggest that the cap is different for each one of those methods. All righty then. So let's go ahead and I don't think there's anything else we need to do here on Nighthawk. Uh, everything's put away for the winter. We are going to pretend like we're closing the doors. So slide the door closed <laughs> and turn on the space heater in here to keep everything nice and toasty. So space heater... You know, there's a space heater right here, you guys. I know you can't see it. It's kind of invisible, but we're turning it on. You know, one of those big flame thing, space heater, looks like a rocket. Okay, we turn that on. Everything's going to stay nice and toasty in here. And you want me to do that one more time? No, you probably didn't. We're going to close the door, and we are done. Oh, actually, yeah, we better use the bathroom before we head into town. Ah, yes. I feel like a new man. All right, let's head on into town here. And we're going to cash in this gold. And then retire for the winter. And relax and have a nice, warm, casual winter at the hotel. We'll eat some good food. We'll lounge around after all the hard work we've been doing this year. And um, just kind of enjoy ourselves and think about... Season 2. Uh, okay, so let's bring up the map. And we want to go into Haynes. Travel. Last time I checked the gold prices, they had dropped a little bit. But they were still pretty high. They just had dropped a little bit from, you know, the max. What's going on? Go, go, go. So we need to go, oh, I went the wrong way, but let's check the prices anyways. Blacksmith specs back the other way. 
Let's just take a quick look at the prices. 1227. Okay, so it's not bad. Um and and it looks like it's rising back up too. That was the all-time high right there. Uh was it? Well, okay, whatever that peak was was actually the all all-time high. So, it's still plenty high enough. Oh, come back truck. Get over here. Okay, let's head over to the blacksmith and get this stuff smelted. We don't have any magnetite, of course, this time because it was just nuggets. Okay. Smelt my gold, man. Okay, let's take this to the bank and make some money. This might quite possibly be the most amount of gold we've had at one time in this playthrough. I don't remember. I know we we did a couple of cleanouts, you know, around or close to a thousand, maybe a little over, but I don't think we've done over fifteen hundred ounces in one one go. So this is going to be a nice payday, you guys. All right, so the stock prices are pretty good. Uh, sell gold bars. Oh, man, we are going to make some bank here. Look at this. $2.170 million. Two million one hundred seventy thousand five hundred seventy-four bucks. Woohoo! Yeah, baby. Okay, let's go ahead and purchase our our uh, what you call it, Glacier Creek, and our Frankenstein now while the prices are good because in the springtime they're gonna go up. But we're not going to deliver them, of course, until spring. Oh, this is great. We're going to be a full Tier 5 operation, guys. All right, so there's the Glacier Creek. It's actually a little... It's under a million, which is great because that's as cheap as it's going to get. Um, and we want to add that. Okay. And the Frankenstein is 608000 yeah, we, sh we definitely can afford this. So let's get one of those and add that. Very cool. And then we're going to cash out, and then we'll see where we are with our money. Uh, no, we need to go here. 1.5 mil and change. Nice. Okay, so that leaves us with $645,242 left over. Uh, in fact, that's, that's almost enough to buy a two Frankensteins, you guys. Oh, my goodness. Um, It is. If we bought two Frankensteins, that's still going to leave us with 30-some-odd thousand bucks. Which well, should be enough to get started. I mean... Are there anything? Yeah, you know what we do have to spend money on is the big fuel tank, actually. Now that I think about it, um, the thing is, though, is this is the, this would be the time to buy another one of those because the price is low. Oh boy, um, where is the big fuel tank thingy? How much does that sucker cost? 
It's right here. Now, that's only 12,000 bucks. Let's buy this now. Because we need it. All right, so let's buy that, and then we'll see where we're sitting. Okay, now, so that gets us to 632,000. And, um, so I think those two Frank, it well, if we buy the two Frankensteins, that should count towards that other count of two that we still have left. So we have the Glacier Creek, the Frankenstein here. Oh, oh, wait, we, we get to, we're going to be able to sell the D-Rocker though. And that's going to get us some money back. All right. You know what we should do actually is let's do this. Let's transport the D-Rocker out to Nighthawk so we can sell it. Well, no, because then we have to pull the backhoe out and get chained up. Eh. Do we get better sell prices in the winter? But nah, I don't feel like screwing with that. I don't feel like screwing with that. But we know we're going to get a nice chunk of change back from the D-Rocker when we sell it. So even though we're going to be really low starting out in the spring by buying another one of these, uh, we'll, we'll be fine because we'll be able to sell the D-Rocker and then we'll be golden. Um, we are going to have to pay for the to fill up the fuel tank too, but I think we'll be fine. I mean, if absolute worst case scenario is... You know, if we have to take a loan for a very short period of time, we have to take a loan. Uh, but I think it makes sense for us to buy this now because this is as cheap as this price is going to get. If we wait till spring or summer or fall, you know, to get another one, it's going to be more expensive, right? Um, so let's do it. And that's still going to leave us, what, $26,000 of of capital and, and the ability to sell the D-Rocker, which we'll do in the spring. I'm not going to mess with that now because everything's already put away. All right, so yeah, twenty four thousand one hundred eighty nine dollars. That's that's pretty low, but oh my goodness, man, we're starting off with a full tier five setup and two Frankenstein's. Uh, where is the other Frankenstein? There it is. Okay, and we got the big fuel tank which we needed. We are gonna have to fill it, but we don't necessarily have to fill it immediately because we still have quite a bit of diesel in the smaller fuel tank that we can start with. So I think we're in really good shape. I think we're in really, really good shape. Okay, cool. I can't wait, man. Oop. It's going to be exciting. All right, let's head to the hotel and end season one. Uh, no, actually, we got to go the other way, I think. Yeah, we got to go this way. Oops. My uh, pickup is pulling to the left, and it's because my steering wheel, which I don't, I have connected to the my computer, but I don't have it mounted at the moment, is not straight, but it's kind of in a bit of a little cubby in my desk, so I'm just going to fight it all the way there since not, we're going to be there in a second anyway, so it doesn't matter. But if you're wondering why I keep swerving to the left, that's why. All right, here's our winter home. We're just going to pull right on in here. There's a little river and a dock out there. That's kind of neat. There might even be some pages out there. All righty then. Oh, there's a story page somewhere. Really hard to see in the snow, though. Yeah. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. You found a new part of the story. Check, check your journal. Stories. Uh, I don't. We haven't looked at this for so long. I don't even know. Whoops. The 
think we've we've read that. We've read the blacksmith thingy. Hotel. Here we go. Matthew took out the blanket from the basket and laid it on the grass. He grabbed some glasses and plates and set them up for his whole family. Girls soon prepared the food, and they all sat there and had a meal. Honey, that was delicious. Isn't that right, baby? Yummy. Okay, so who's ready for a walk? Go without me. Mommy needs to rest and sunbathe for a while. Okay, we'll be back soon. Be safe. All right, so first hotel story. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to save the game. We're on episode 36, I think. So we're going to call this uh, E36 end S1, end of season one. We're going to save that game. So that way I have a save in case something weird happens. And we're going to go into the hotel. Welcome to the hotel. Hello, welcome to the Haynes Hotel. You can spend the whole winter here and get back to work at the beginning of spring. You won't be able to dig for gold anyways. Cheers. In season. Let's do it. What? Why did all that stuff get destroyed? <laughs> I thought we had everything put away. I don't know. Well, okay, I guess we're going to have to spend some money fixing that stuff up. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> for season one. We mined 6,182.49 ounces of gold. We process 61,761.01 yards of dessert, uh, of dessert, <laughs> of dirt, <clears throat> excuse me. We gathered 86,055.08 magnetite. Gathered gold to dirt ratio is zero. I don't even know exactly what that means. Gathered gold to real time ratio, 40 ounces per hour. Okay. So we averaged 40 ounces per hour because we did, we pretty much dug in real time, except for the very beginning. Um, we, we weren't on real time in the very beginning. We've paid out $22,697 to workers. We earned, wow, guys, we earned almost a billion dollars in season one. That's pretty good. We used 1,331 gallons of fuel and we drove 369.4 miles. Look at that, man. Uh, all right. So let's click OK. We'll go into the hotel and, and relax for the winter. Okay, it is now springtime, and um, that was the very that was the quickest relaxation period I think I've ever had in my life. It felt like it just kind of went by like that, because <laughs> it did. Anyway, all right, you guys, it is spring. Oh, it's spring. I don't know why all that crap broke, but apparently it did. So we're gonna have to deal with that. Um, apparently we were. Must have been paying our workers over the winter, too, because now we only have $1,906. But our very first order of business is to get out to uh, Nighthawk and pull out the D-Rocker and sell it. So, you know, we have a little bit of cash back. And then, of course, we're going to have to get um, the Glacier Creek and, well, all of the equipment, really, the, the uh, wash plant equipment delivered out there, which is going to cost some money. And um and start getting set up. So that is what is on the agenda. All right, guys, uh, we're out at uh, Nighthawk here, and uh, we need to get the D Rocker delivered, and then we need to get a salt. So why don't we park you right here? What time is it? Seven o'clock in the morning. Okay, so it's it's a bit dark out, but hopefully it'll. Lighten up for us here uh, as the day starts to progress. All right. So I need to get the excavator out first. Well, actually, let's pull out the, let's pull that trailer out first and get it out of the way. See if we can just uh, actually keep this here for now. I think it'll, I think it'll be okay. All right, now um, this little water pump might give us a little bit of a hassle. Let's just see what happens. Starts right up. That's good. Been sitting in here all winter. We're kind of scraping it. 
<laughs> but it's letting us it's letting us take it out, so that's the important thing. And um, let's lower this down a little more. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Now, I'm not sure where it's going to actually deliver the D-Rocker. So let's just stay here and see what happens. Where are we going? In here. Okay, so transport. We want the D-Rocker, and we want it delivered to Nighthawk. Okay. Oh, it's right there. Okay, good. Uh, now we're going to need to get some chains. So where are my trays? I guess I probably left those all out over here, didn't I? I'd rather not drive the excavator down here to get the chains and then drive it all the way back up there. Not that that's that big of a deal, but we'll make things simple on ourselves here. Grab this. Oh, something was showing as damage down here. What is that? Oh, it's the red button. Yeah, okay. We, we don't care about that. That's not a big deal. None of the rest of the stuff that I left out there should be damageable. It should have held up just fine over the winter. Okay, we need four of the short chains or cables. My wife and I um, spent a couple of days in Estes Park, Colorado. Just had like a little mini vacation. Um, she's actually been gone for a couple of months. Visiting her brother in Oregon, who is sick and unfortunately not long for this world but she came home um came home to to see see me <laughs> for a few weeks before she goes back anyway so we went on this this little vacation and up in Essence park and while we were there we rode a sky tram up to the top of this mountain peak uh that allows you then to to, to look out over estes valley and it was really neat and so anyway the tour guide that was in the car with us is also happened to be the person who has to maintain the cables on that thing. And so I was asking him a bunch of questions about the cables and, uh, including how do you, you know, how do you know that this cable is sound and, you know, just kind of some questions like that. And what he actually told me was that they, they have a device that they run over that cable. It's a big, huge, like, 500,000 pound, you know, steel cable. It's about, oh, it's probably about like two inches in diameter or something like that, maybe. And anyway, what he's, what they do is they actually run a device that, that does a CAT scan, a CT scan over the cable um, to look for, you know, broken strands and just kind of see generally how, you know, what kind of shape it's in, uh, which is very interesting. So he said, this cable here is, you know, I, I can't remember. It's basically about 20 times stronger than, well, no. What did he say? It's about 10 times stronger than the load that's currently on it. In other words, it's rated for 10 times the weight that it's actually carrying kind of thing. And out of the whole cable, you know, which was, I don't know, 1,500 yards of cable or something. It was, I mean, it was a long cable. Um, he said there's only four wires that are actually you know broken out of that whole entire cable which was you know definitely within tolerance so anyways i thought that was just kind of interesting um to see how all that worked and stuff so it was cool all right let's um let's what are we doing we need to lift this up so switch to digging mode raise this up get this out so we can get the cables on it Very good. All right, now 
Let's get the lights on. It's so daggone dark, man. But it is Alaska in the spring, early spring. So it still stays dark for a while outside. So we should get... Uh, let me raise this up. I get used to these controls again. It's been... For me, it's actually been about a week or so. But I play a lot of farming simulator, and I've even started uh, getting into American Truck Simulator. So it's like, okay, I got to get my brain in Gold Rush Control mode instead of <laughs> you know farming simulator mode or whatever. Anyway, uh, let's go over here. We want to be right about here, and then we'll lower that down to there. Maybe back it up just a little bit. That should be good. And then we'll connect these up. Uh, I don't know how much money we will get for this, but it should be a decent chunk of change. Definitely enough to get us started operating for the season, I would expect. That goes there. And this one here goes in back. Perfect. Okay, so we are still in drive mode. Let's get into excavator mode and raise this up. That should be good enough. And then we just need to take it over to the cell point here. So what are we, we're currently sitting in $18,000, okay. But we're, like I said, we're gonna get a little chunk of change from this thing and that should put us in good condition for getting up and running here. The D-Rocker was a nice wash plant. You know, it was a definite noticeable upgrade from the, the normal rocker plant. Okay, so let's let it kind of stop swinging there and then we'll bring it down there. Disconnect the cables. No. Oh, well, that one just broke. It's funny that it broke after it was on the ground. And then we just go over to here. And we want to sell the D-Rocker. Yeah, look at that. We'll get $192,500. That's, that's great. Uh, so we don't want to sell anything else except for the D-Rocker. There we go. Nice. Okay. So now we're up to $210,000. That's plenty of money to get started. Plenty of money. We are in good shape here. All right. Let's see now. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. While we're actually over here, let's get this chain here. See, the chain actually looks like it's still sound, even though there's a broken hook down there. This is really weird, man. Can I hook it back up again? <laughs> really? I don't know. That almost seems like a bug or something. Well, unless we, you know, unless the very next thing we pick up, it just instantly snaps again. I don't know, man. That's really weird. Okay, let's get this up in the air and maybe bring it in a little bit. Okay, so I guess um, maybe the first thing we should install is the trommel and then the, maybe the gravel pumps. We got a bunch of crap in the way. Oh, no, we don't have stuff in the way. Yeah, I, I staged it so it wouldn't be in the way. Okay. Uh, well, then why don't we start with the big boy? Let's get the... Let's get the... Uh, whatchamacallit? The Glacier Creek... Wash plant. Glacier Creek wash plant. Uh, we'll put that in place, and then we'll... Start putting the other big... Big pieces of equipment in place. I'm going to kind of pull over here... 
I think we'll just do these one at a time just so we don't have a bunch of other stuff that's in the way. Don't hook my pickup truck. Transport. All right, so we want our Glacier Creek wash plant. It's costing us 1500 bucks. Man, I hope we don't get a stupid lightning storm while we're in the middle of trying to do all this. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I just delivered it to old Arnold. <laughs> Dead gummit. Oh, crap. Uh, that just... Dead gummit. When was the last time I saved? We had an auto save here. Was it at the moment I was picking this thing up? You know what? That's $3,000 we're going to lose because I'm going to have to pay $1,500. Well, actually, can I transport it straight from old Arnold? In that case, we'd only lose $1,500. Not that I want to lose $1,500, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, looks like we can. All right, you know what? I don't want to do all of that all over again because it looks like it saved at the moment I picked up the... The crate so we're just gonna suck it up and lose 1500 bucks which really sucks but it is what it is okay so let's move the glacier creek over to nighthawk and we gotta i gotta watch that for next time goodness good thing we got all that extra money right okay there she is tier five wash plant it's the the textures haven't fully loaded in so it kind of looks not so it looks a little low res at the moment Okay, well, anyway, let's get this hooked up. I'm not sure which direction it actually needs to go. Um, sh yeah, this is... Okay, so that's the where the material will come out of. Let's go take a quick look at how it's going to sit, because this, this arrangement is not exactly the same as old Arnold. It's, it's a little bit different setup. So I think we're going to put it right here. No, no, that, no, this is where the conveyor is going to go. I think the D rock or not the D rocker, but the wash plant's going to go here. Okay. So that means the feed in needs to be on the right hand side. Okay. That makes sense. So we just need to make sure when we hook up to it that that's on the right, which it should be. No, we're unfortunately we're on the wrong side of it. Okay. Well, if we have to flip it around, we have to flip it around. So I don't think I can easily get in behind it. Yeah, that's that isn't gonna work. All right, well that's fine. We'll just hook up to it this way, and then we'll, like I said, we'll flip it around. Get squared up on it. Uh oh, the chains are snagged on it. Well, all right. The <laughs> We'll drag it. Oh, shit. Oops. Excuse my language. <laughs> we lost a couple of cables. Uh, I was going to say, we'll just drag it over there. Um, This is... Uh, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> I got this million dollar piece of equipment here, and I've got it tipped up on its side. <laughs> oh, Lord. This is not good. Okay, here, let's, uh, all right, this is really a really, really bad idea. I'm just going to be the first one to admit it, but I'm going to see if I could kind of slide it back and get it back flat. We're going to have to get closer to it, though. Oh, well, okay, I guess we can do it that way, too. It's a tough, it's a tough Glacier Creek wash plant, man. It's uh, it can handle abuse because they knew idiots like me, <laughs> like me were gonna be coming along and uh, doing this kind of thing to it. Okay, can we do this? Man. 
Man, that thing is just swinging all over the place. Okay, I think we got it. Whew. That was a serious pain in the neck, you guys. <laughs> it really was. Oh, man. Okay, I think the trommel's probably the next big piece we need to move out. So let's get turned around and get that thing out here. Hopefully that one will be a little better to work with. We'll see. The sun's coming out. There we go. That's what we like to see. Get a little bit of light and warmth going. Uh, what? It's 35 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's above freezing. Still cold, though. Okay, let's just park you right here for the moment with our magically self-repairing cables there. Transport. Now let's make sure we're on Nighthawk this time. And now what we want is our reinforced trommel. Okay. Oh, you know what? We had another worker that popped up too. Two workers. What are you? You are a conveyor belt hopper. Yeah, we will hire you, and you're uh, a Tier 1 excavator. Yeah, we'll hire you, too. He just makes our excavator more, uh, I, I think, a little more quickly and better fuel usage, stuff like that. Um, And then let's get them hired so I don't forget to do that. So we'll assign you to the excavator and assign. And then you're the new conveyor belt hopper. I guess we can't assign you yet because we don't have it set up yet. Okay, that's fine. Now, uh, if I could get this long ways, uh, you know what? That... The eyelets on this are so far apart. We're going to have to use the longer cables now. I don't... Well, let's try it. I don't think it's going to work. It might, though. It might. What we want to do is... Get the bucket right in the center. You're kidding me. Look how close it is. <laughs> um, all right. We could maybe lower this down to there and it's as far forward as we can get it because it's pulling those other cables really tight now. Is that enough, though? Oh, goodness gracious sakes alive. All right, I got to go get two more longer cables. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now they just need to not break. So. Easy, easy, easy. Easy peasy. Okay, let's try that. I'm not sure which direction this needs to go in, but again, let's just get it over there first, and then we'll worry about that. Yeah! <laughs> this is making me nervous. Swinging that big old thing over that way. Okay, come on, cables. You can do it. Not 
nice piece of machinery, man. All of this is. This is top of the line stuff. <laughs> All right, dang it. Let's bring you back down. Can we find the cable that just snapped and probably magically healed itself? Uh, is that it right there? Yeah, <laughs> it's just sitting right there. <laughs> okay. So guys, you only ever need one set of cables ever in this whole game. And when they break, just pick them off the ground, and then they'll all of a sudden be fine again. Okay, so there's there's actually the broken hooks from the other one, but where's the... Oh, there it is. <laughs> right there. <laughs> all right. Let's try this again. Easy. Easy. Okay. Here we go. I'm, I'm probably supposed to be grabbing this from the side and not the end, but the last time I moved one of these, I did it from the end. Okay, let's go here and then swing it this way. Don't break cables. All right, I need to figure out. Oh, you know what? I think I do have it the right direction. Yeah, because the little um, kind of square crossbar thingy that's on the far end is matching up with the little ghost image. So I think we got it in the right position. We just got to get it down there and then kind of swing it over. Easier said than done, right? Yikes. I mean, actually, in hindsight, it would have actually been better for me to come at it from the other angle, but I wonder if I can just raise it up. Okay, that's as high as it's going to go that way. Raise it like that. Oh, Bowser's. <laughs> this is totally not the way this should be done. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to let me snap it in place because... No, don't say snap. That is the wrong word to use right now. Now, it's... it's it requires a little bit better uh, placement than that. Okay. Well, then here's what we got to do. Let's... Let's set it down here. E easy, easy, easy. Okay. Now, let's swing this back around. Get it right about in the center. Bring this down. Okay, so can I get to you, rehook you up, and then put you here? Same thing here. And then these should be a little bit easier to get to. Okay. Oh, 
Um, looks like the boom. Okay, that's as high up as the boom's gonna go. Let's raise the stick carefully. All right, and then we'll extend out the bucket. Okay. Now we just have to kind of drive it in place. There we go. Oh man, we got it. Okay. Whew. Man, they make this challenge. I wonder if they deliberately made... Well, no, because the actual placement of the Glacier Creek was every bit as easy, if not easier, than old Arnold was. So I was going to say, I wonder if they make it harder because it's a higher level claim, but I don't think so. I think it's just they changed it up so it's not exactly the same as the other one. All right, two gravel pumps, and then that takes care of the the large wash plant equipment that we got to get in place. Of course, we still have a lot of work to do before this is ready to go, but at least we'll have all the ginormous uh, wash plant stuff moved. Now, we still have to do the big Jenny, and we have to do the big fuel tank, so, you know, there's still a lot more to do, like I said. Uh, oh, and the conveyor belt, but the conveyor hopper and the belt and all that, that should be pretty easy because it just goes right there. I'm not expecting that to be a difficult thing to put in place. This thing's a little easier to move because it's just not quite as gangly as the other two pieces were. A little smaller. Okay, let's start to swing this around like so. We want to put this one in first. Okay, now, can I just gently do this? Yep, there we go. All right, get the cables out of there so they don't try and hook back up to it. That was way easier than the other two. There we go. Okay, two more big things to move. The uh, generator and the big fuel tank. Let's go get them. Okay, we are just about out of fuel. Uh, so let's back the rear end of this into the shed here and get some more fuel in it. I don't want it to run out right in the middle of trying to play something. It's too far. Really? Oh, man. I drop this back down, too. Can't see what I'm doing here. Let's try that. There we go. So that's at 80%, 79. Let's just fill this up about halfway. And okay, that's good enough. Okay, uh, next, uh, let's do the Jenny next and then we'll do the fuel tank last. Transport, Nighthawk, a uh, big power generator, and you know what? Let's, no, I don't want to, that other thing to be in the way. Whoops. I just hope we don't get thunder coming out here. Uh, okay, yep, so we just hook up to the tops of those.
Okay, so that's kind of more or less where I wanted to put it. It's it's not quite level, but it's not it's it's more level than it was at Old Arnold. So as far as that goes, um, I'm I'm good with it. It's just that you know we're gonna have to run cables from here all the way over here. Yeah, I think we should think about putting this right behind the conveyor system, like right here where I'm standing. But we got to get the conveyor system in first. So let's just leave it where it is for the moment. Maybe we could put the fuel tank over here. All right. Now don't snag hooks. There we go. Oh, we got a snag. It's okay. It's locked in place, though, so it shouldn't do anything. Oh, lordy. <laughs> that thing's swinging. <sighs> okay. Probably right about here-ish, but then squared up, of course, with the conveyor. Okay, that calmed it down a little bit. Um, that's as far out as I can zoom. Okay, let's just... Uh, okay, looks like we need to back up a little bit. Because it's kind of hanging up on the thing there. Hop out for a second. Okay, we're going to want to swing it clockwise just a, a little bit and try and get this corner right about at the end of that, ideally. So, let's swing it that way just a little bit. And then okay, let's drop it there for a moment. That's not too bad, actually. I'd like I'd like it to be well, this is actually not too bad because it gives us a little room, you know, a little room for the cable connections going through here. I kind of want it to be a little further this direction though. Gently lift it up here. Drive it forward a little bit. Maybe to there, and then set it down there. Okay, now let's look at it. Yeah, this is this is actually pretty good, you guys. This is actually pretty good. I don't think we'll have a, a problem connecting cables up here. Um, before we disconnect the steel cables, the lifting cables, let's just see uh, what happens. We can connect that there. We can bring that out that way. Yeah, I think this is going to work. Can bring this one out this way. In fact, you know what we can do is hook this straight on into here like that. There, it's already hooked up. And this one, let's move this one over to here. And this one might make sense putting that there. We might end up running some cables around this way, but I mean, these are, these are super easy to switch out. I just want to make sure it wasn't going to say something like there's something in the way and you can't hook it up here, blah, 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 kind of thing.
I'm going to throw that off on that side so it doesn't get snagged, hopefully. Oh, you know what? As soon as you hook up a cable to these, it anchors them in place anyway, so we'll, we won't have any trouble getting out of here in terms of it snagging anything. There we go. I like it, man. I like it. Okay, so um, is there a better place for us to put the big fuel tank, or should we put it over in that spot that I was thinking of? We could put it over here more by the shop here, but I don't know that we need to. We could stick it here potentially, and then any vehicles that need to be fueled up just kind of pull up right along here, and then it'd make it super easy fueling this thing up. Okay, that's a possibility. Uh, putting it over here, though, it's just, you know, it's nice and out of the way. But it would make refueling the generator a bit of a pain in the neck just because we'd have to put fuel in the small tank and then haul the small tank over, you know, kind of thing. All right, well, here, let's... uh. We lost our sound on the excavator. Let's get those cables off the ground. Let's go grab the fuel tank and bring it over here, and then we'll kind of decide what the best placement's going to be. It's so hard to see the lines from this angle. All right, let's try that. Okay, that's pretty nice and lined up, actually. Especially if you look at it from this side. Okay, what I want to do then is, can we put, yeah, push it back a little more like that. All right, I think I better drop that down and get, let's get the cables off of it because I could, I could push it with the bucket. I want, I want this in to come in to right about here-ish. Oh, I can I can move this myself, seriously? That's actually kind of where I want it though. I can. How funny is that? Um do we actually need to hook power up to this? It kind of looks that way, except for it's a different color than everything else. That's about where I want it. Just like that. It's I mean, it's not. Oh, that is so funny that I can move that. <laughs> I mean, you imagine how heavy this thing would be even empty with all that steel? Okay, and I can walk through here. I can walk through here. I'm assuming that, you know, once we fill it up, then it's not going to be... I mean, there's no way I should be able to move. Okay, that's actually not bad. That's kind of what I had in mind. All right, now what we have to do next is we have to go... Uh, something highlighted a second ago. Where, where was it? Uh, uh, oh, we have to go to the door. Right. Okay. And then, uh, to fill this thing all the way up, how much is this going to cost? $20,247. Let's do it. Boom. The fuel will be delivered at midnight. Really? Okay. Well, <laughs> we're going to have to operate, uh, with the fuel we have in the smaller tank until midnight then. Because I'm not fast forwarding the time. I want to get, get to digging here. Uh, as soon as possible. Okay, I like that. That's that's a good setup. 
I, I'm happy with this setup. I think it's uh, everything is positioned pretty much the way that it should be. The only thing left for the plant as far as putting components in place is um, the sluice boxes. Uh, now, we're going to have a ton of water lines and water and electrical lines and splitters and nuggetators and demagnetators and potatoes <laughs> and all that stuff to hook up. But we got the big stuff done. All right, you guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. I have no idea how long this episode is going to be. I'm definitely going to have to edit it down because I've been recording uh, for well over two hours in total. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to let this episode go here. When when we start up the next episode, we'll get the, the sluice boxes in place, and then we'll start hooking up all the little stuff. And if all goes well, hopefully we can start running dirt uh, right at the end of that next episode. We'll just see how long it takes. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.